Hey, this is Adam with Tech Dive AV Club. We're going to be looking at Movie Studio 16, specifically a guide to rendering. So something I want to show you is this little tool right here. It is the called the Loop Region. And I'm going to select this little white box. And that's all I'm going to be rendering out just to show you uh, some tips about rendering. Because for a lot of people, that is one of the scarier parts about video editing. You may feel very comfortable moving it around and whatever. But then you have to create an entire project off of all the media you've created. And creating that project uh, might feel overwhelming because there's so many options. And uh, there's sometimes it looks really good when you do it, and sometimes it might look really bad. And if you really don't understand the codecs you're choosing and your source material and things like that, uh, then you could really mess up your project. Uh, something that you look, would normally have looked great, you've made look really bad because you've chosen the wrong codec. Uh, and, and this isn't a perfect guide about why to choose one codec or another or about uncompressed uh, versus compressed and things like that. This is going to be just more of a quick tips about it so that way you feel a little more comfortable in navigating these menus and experimenting uh, for what's going to work best for your video. So if you got a project and you're going to make movie, that's this is something that you're going to use if you are uh, uh, somebody who, who's just looking to do this uh, this one kind of workflow over and over again. Uploading it to YouTube, we'll upload it directly to YouTube or upload it to Facebook. You can link these with your accounts and you can uh, uh, actually upload it directly there and this will render it out in a format that's better for uh, the kinds of videos you're creating uh, and saving for a DVD or Blu-ray is the same or save it for my camera portal device. This will help you choose the right codec and I would say if you don't have any experience in this and you're not really planning on learning some more of the deeper uh, meanings behind the codecs and containers and stuff like that. Uh, this is definitely where I would stick to because this is a way to keep you from messing it up. Um, but for you, those of you who are experimenting more with the render as button, here in the render as, first thing I'm going to do is go to render options and I'm going to render loop region only. That's very important because uh, it actually really helps you more decidedly get the exact project out that you want. And I'm going to quickly go through some of these uh, formats and templates. So uh, when it says format here, these are image sequence, a bump, which would be like a bump map or a JPEG or a PNG or a TIFF. And you can render out your project as a whole bunch of pictures, which is a lot of very useful things you can do with that. Uh, a TIFF, uh, for example, so two quick, two quick things that are very helpful. A TIFF is an uncompressed photo. So uh, if you're trying to import something in a Photoshop and you want to edit over every frame or something like that, I would highly recommend highly highly recommend uh, TIFF however if you need a whole bunch of pictures for a website a PNG might be better uh, a video game you might need BMPs but that would be really complex you would probably know more what you're doing than I would if you're if you're uh, in that kind of situation uh, but uh, JPEG is a good compressed version that's going to be true so if you're just trying to get some pictures uh, of your video and upload them to Facebook or something like that or do something quick and funny that doesn't really the fidelity doesn't matter a lot and you don't want to take up a lot of file space a JPEG would be just fine uh, but those are really kind of your main ones you would use right there. Uh, and these magic codecs, these are the codecs that uh, are kind of your bread and butter. The the and when it says internet, really what that means is an MP4. So if you look here, now it's called Untitled MP4. Uh, these MP4s are different resolutions. So you can see you got 4K, 1080p, uh, 720p, um, all sorts of. Sorry, I'm in a laptop. It's kind of hard to scroll sometimes. All sorts of different uh, codecs that you could choose from there, uh, and and Blu-ray even. Uh, and so these codecs are better. Uh, the ones that say Internet are better for YouTube and uh, things like that because an MP4 is a streamable format, and YouTube won't have to compress it a second time. A good rule for codecs is if you have to compress something multiple times. It's not going to do you well. Uh, so uh, you only want to compress it once. And so an MP4 is compressed, but it's it's a good compression. And you always want to render it out. If you've got a 720p video, render it out at 720p. 1080p video, render it out at 1080p. Up-resing and down-resing might be good or it might be bad if you have already compressed it. So if the video comes off your camera already compressed and then you up-res it, you might actually make it look worse instead of looking better. So just try and render it out as a good rule of thumb. If you've got a 1080p camera, try and render it out 1080p. If you've shot at 60 frames a second, try and render it out at 60 frames a second. Uh, and like I said, I could go into detail about all of these. For Blu-ray, you would only be using a Blu-ray format if you're a uh, Blu-ray video stream. If something you're at, like if something you're uploading it to ask you for that format, or you're uh, creating a Blu-ray for disc. Uh, and so here are more uh, MP4s uh, that you can use. And these these ones, uh, see they all say Intel QSV. What that means is I have an Intel chip in my in this laptop here, and I can use this 
rendering format. So it's the same. It's the same as these, except some of these are capable of Intel QSV, while um, so these are AVC AAAC MP4s, but these are HEV VC AAC MP4. So the small difference is is the HEV stands for High Efficiency Video Codec. That's a little bit newer than uh, the AVC. AVC is kind of an older high def codec. It was the miracle codec for high def uh, when I actually was in video school. HEV uh, HEVC is kind of the newer version. These are both great versions. Uh, now all of these, again, I'm getting back to the Intel QSV, are capable of rendering out faster through the graphical computations through my i5 and my computer. If you have an NVIDIA card, you can also utilize, utilize an, an encodec streaming through, I don't know exactly the word through, but use your CUDA cores in your uh, NVIDIA card, graphics card, to render out even faster with your graphics card. And that's going to be the fastest way you can do it. Otherwise, you'll just be rendering through your CPU normally. And that's okay. It's okay to do that. Uh, it's going to be fine. I use it all the time because I actually have an AMD machine uh, that on my main computer. This is my laptop. But when I edit on my main computer, I can't use any of those functions. And I can still render out uh, fine with a good processor. So don't feel like if you can't use this software if you don't have Intel or Nvidia, you totally can. Uh, you just can't use some of its uh, faster rendering features. So here we have main concept MPEG-2. This is really kind of the bread and butter of days of old. This is great for DVDs. You notice it says DVDs a lot right here. These specifically will go straight to Vegas's sister software, DVD Architect. You're going to want to render in a DVD Architect format if you're creating a DVD with DVD Architect because you'll have to compress a video to get it to fit on a DVD and this will compress it in a way that DVD Architect will like. While other H um, while other uh, compressions might not be so good. The good thing about um, the HDV codec for uh, MPEG-2s is in Blu-rays, these are all will be great for uh, transporting this media. Uh, it's not great for the internet, uh, but it is great uh, if you want a compressed local file of something like a DVD does. Uh, these are great formats for it. Uh, and again, these are the Blu-rays you'll use. So that was streaming Blu-rays, which are different. These are the Blu-rays you would use if you're going to actually upload something with Blu-ray. Now, this Real Media 9 uh, has got a whole bunch of interesting... Um, Now this Real Media 9 is is uh, I've never used it, and I can tell you it's for like video. It's like for back when the internet was crappy, uh, and uh, you needed to uh, create videos that were streamable over very very small connections. Uh, I would imagine there's still uses for this, but I've actually not had to use it. Now when it says Sony, what's cool about uh, uh, the Vegas software line, which includes Movie Studio 16 Platinum, is uh, it used to be Sony's. And so when Magic bought this thing, they essentially bought this render engine, which means that if you have a Sony camera, you're in luck because it's actually got a lot of Sony specific stuff. Uh, it's got more than just Sony, so don't feel like you can't use it with if, unless you have Sony. Uh, but uh, the Sony stuff it's really rich with because uh, it used to be a Sony software and this is Sony's AVC HD like I said that used to be the superhero of the uh, video codecs and so a lot of times if you had a DV camera that recorded in HD it would record in 10, uh, 1080-60i or something like that and you could render out compressionless with these softwares you would only render out with these if you got a camera that records in these you would want to render with these so that way you see all this memory stick and stuff these are like camera formats and uh, you would want to render out as these to do some sort of compressionless format for archiving uh, but that's not necessarily something that you would publish a media with now these uh, are uh, XAVC and these is actually what my camera uses so I have a FDR AX100 and it's a Sony camera and it's very awesome and it can shoot 4k footage and so I actually if I want to render out compressionless I can render out one of these codecs and it'll be compressionless with this video for Windows codec uh, you're gonna look see NTF uh, SC DV these are kind of old traditional DV tape kind of codecs uh, and you're going to want to use these if you have an older camera. For This is, but these right here are also uh, NTS, NTSC, 
uh, is something that you can use if you're in Japan or America. Here we use that format, but if you're in Europe, you're going to be using the PAL format. Uh, and uh, that's how everything's just accepted. These are broadcast formats and uh, if you're creating a broadcast uh, for like cable TV or something and you're in Europe you're gonna need PAL but you're gonna need NTSC if you're in America and that's where those numbers come from right there and that's where those letters come from right there but this particularly is Windows Media Video so these are things that you will use if you're gonna embed uh, uh, media inside of a PowerPoint or something like that and notice the WMV uh, these are definitely Windows media capable so when you render out in these uh, it's really about how big you want your video and how much resolution you have that's what your options are here and then XD cam is really great uh, XD cam is a very popular uh, camera style and it has some really high-res footage I've had the opportunity to work with an HD cam for a while and it was some beautiful stuff uh, and these are different HD camera codecs that you could use to render out compressionless video and archive your HD camera footage so uh, that is rendering in Vegas uh, notice particularly movie studio 16 platinum notice that this is the folder you're going to be rendering your project to and this is the name of your project so you can always change it here to whatever name you want and then when you hit render it's going to start rendering your project now oh, it says no template selected that's because I didn't actually select a template so I'm going to go up here and just select uh, any one of these for me right now and I'm going to hit render and it's going to render my project uh, pretty quickly right up here and when it's done I can say open in folder and I can see the actual project as a video when I'm done there we are that's it with no sound just a white canvas All right, that was how to render in Movie Studio 16 Platinum. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave me a comment below if you're looking for a tutorial idea. And uh, check out our affiliates link if you're looking to purchase this software. That would really help us out. And also uh, check out our website at techdive.live where we have all the things we're going, going on and all the things we're into listed there so you can see uh, us as a whole. And again, thanks for watching. See you next time.